All right, what's up guys? Today we're starting on the next chapter of the Mustang build, which is something I'm really excited for. Uh, we're gonna clean up the engine bay, get it all painted fresh to match the interior, the whole car, the whole chassis part is, is gonna be slowly turning the same gray that the cage and the inside is painted. So the entire bay, these uh, front edges here and everything, that's all gonna turn gray. And that's what we're working on today. So we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna show you what I'm working on off the jump. All right guys, so this is pretty much what I'm working with. Um, the number one goal really is just to get it cleaned up and painted good. There's really no brackets that need to be in here. Like my ignition coil and all that is actually gonna be inside this time. I have a neat little fitting for that. Um, this stuff, there's gonna be no ABS. I deleted the ABS block. I took the booster out as well, so we can paint all that stuff and get in there and clean it up as well. I did a little bit of clearancing down there and as well as right there, because those two areas had some issues. Um, but otherwise, there's no modification really needed in here, so I'm just cleaning it up. The first thing I'm starting on, I started on the other day fixing this. The previous owner, I don't really blame him, he was just junking this thing. So he cut this to get the wiring harness out. Kind of sucks because this is where the headlight mounts. So this does have to be pretty correct for the headlights to sit right. So I'm going to weld this part here back together first thing. Weld this here back together. And um, I ordered the headlights so I can try and bend all this right before I paint it. So that way I don't flex it and break the paint off. Otherwise, I have a couple delete plates to make. I've already actually made these two plates. They're just going to tack in right here. And I'm gonna seam seal them. So I'm gonna weld this stuff up after I take the dash apart so I can tape tape off all these holes on the inside so we don't get dirt in there. Alright guys, so I got the dash out as you can see, just so I can kind of figure out where to put this. And this is the feed through that is gonna be this is where the distributor is gonna be. So this is gonna go right there. It's actually gonna sit down there but this way you don't have to have the ignition coil in the car you just put the ignition wire here the ignition the coil wire will come out the other side with another coil wire that jumps to there now I was like originally and I could can't really put it in there I could put it here but that's further away this is the closest spot I could put it I was originally gonna put it like down here but then it would have to run up and back into the distributor because I was gonna just open up like one of these holes but that's going to be like behind the distributor. So we're going to keep it right here. And that way you won't even see the wire. It will just be hidden from this part of the base. So we're going to drill that now. All right. So they recommend to use a hole saw. And you could easily use a hole saw for this. I just do not have a one-inch hole saw. So we got the old step bit, Christmas tree bit. And we're just going to hog this out. It's only thin sheet metal. So it's not going to take very much. All right, guys. So we got a perfect little one-inch hole here. And it drops right in. So now what we have to do is mark the four small holes because they're just going to get little nuts and bolts to hold them in. And uh, that will be that little piece. And you know, like I said, the coil wire will clip right in, run over to there. And clearly you're going to silicone this so you don't leak, but that'll keep everything nice and concealed. All right, guys. So I didn't mount the ignition box yet, but I just mounted the coil over there. Um, up and out of the way, tucked behind the dash. You will be able to see it because the dash doesn't come down that low, but it's going to be back there. I'm probably going to put the ignition box right here just because that has the dial on it for the two-step, the rev limiter, and the setup. So I'm probably going to put it right here so that way I can see the lights if it's on or not, and I can actually change them from my driving position. So I just taped off all the holes, and um, what I got to do next here is I made these plates when I actually first got the car which are for these two holes here. These holes, honestly, I'll probably just get like rubber grommets for, but these ones, clearly I can't do that. So I'm gonna weld them up, uh, just tack in the plates and seam seal them in, nothing too crazy. This is the holes where the bolts come through. For the ignition box, I might actually run them backwards so the heads are in here and it looks a little bit cleaner. All right guys, so I just, just tacked these in. Uh, this one's a lot thicker. This one I don't plan on using for anything, but this one I made thicker. So in case I want to mount something through it, it's not going to be an issue. Um, I just seam sealed them. Luckily, I was able to use to the one tube I used on my roof and clean out the tip. But I'm going to smooth these up, and then we're going to start welding that.
All right, so we got it all welded up here. Not the prettiest in the world, but it's just to hold the headlight. Fix that one, round the edge out. All of that. Not really having much luck fixing this, but I'll probably give it a couple more goes before I call it. Try to make that look all right. Um, I did order the headlights so that I can see just how close it all is when it's all said and done. And uh, hopefully it's pretty close. This right here was actually about an eighth inch further out than this front part. Like this was an eighth inch back. But I flapped this to smooth if need be. I'll elongate the holes to shift the headlight over. But hopefully it'll fit without any issues. It looks a little bit closer to stock. All right, now that this is fixed, I just gotta trim out all these plastic plugs, just like I did on the interior. Take out all the extra bolts. And I decide I'm gonna cut these off and flap this one down, because they're just obnoxious. And I'm either gonna cut this one down or drill the spot welds and pull it and then try and weld them shut. But right now, like I said, I'm just gonna try and get all these shits out of the way. Then we're gonna be able to get everything cleaned up so I can spray it and hopefully it'll come out looking pretty good.
guys. So I went around and with the pads and scuffed everything up. Got them all cleaned up. These were like really rusty. So I did hit these with the wire wheel because these are going to be getting painted gray. Now, uh, pretty much knocked off any loose paint. Around here we had some loose paint, which is really common around the brake booster because the brake fluid is paint. So scrubbed that all up. Started to clean this up. Bit of a pain in the ass. I also taped all the holes on the inside and started masking off there just so it's done for now. Not really much else has to be masked. I mean, clearly the subframe and this front cross member or the sway bar mount, so those have to be done. Yeah, but everything else is pretty much done. The inside of the wheel wells, I'm probably gonna be doing like a Raptor liner or a bed liner in here, so I'm not worrying about them right now. We're just gonna paint this stuff, and if overspray gets in there, it gets in there. I have my coilovers, so I'm not worried about painting them. I'm just gonna mask off the wheels. So we're gonna finish masking some stuff up and then clean this up with some cleaner and get it ready to spray. All right, so I just did a little quick and easy masking on them. Nothing crazy, the subframes are probably gonna get touched up because they do have some rust on them. So that way, if there's a little bit of overspray, I'll fix it when I fix that. Taped up the steering shaft, taped up this uh, hood cable. I'm just gonna like hang it from something so it's out of the way when I paint. And then I threw this stuff over the wheels real quick just to cover that up. And for the most part, everything's actually pretty covered. It's pretty much ready to get cleaned. I just re just went through and prepped this up some. Forgot about this. Gotta make sure I spray that. And uh, the masking stuff I use is this 3M film. It's like about 12 bucks for this roll. This is a five foot piece. So when you unroll it, it's five foot long. Clearly I missed an edge on this one, but um, the only tip I have is make sure that the letters, you can read them, that side's out, because my uncle was telling me some of this stuff, the paint will only stick to one side. So like if you spray this on the wrong side and you have like a window masked off, and the paint will actually flake off and fall into the paint you just painted. But it's really neat because it actually clings to the car. So you can lay this out, cut around it with an X-Acto knife, and tape it, and it'll be cut right to side. That's what I did on my 240, and this shit is awesome. I love it. I literally keep a roll in the shop for masking all types of things when I'm working, and that's pretty much what I'm actually gonna wrap like the motor and stuff up with to keep them from getting paint on. Uh, just wiped over everything with the acetone. Everything's pretty cleaned up. Around these, there was a good bit of grime, so I really got in there. This is definitely harder to do than the inside, just because there's like so many edges that like you have to get in and behind all these lips and whatnot. But for the most part, it's pretty clean. Tomorrow, I'm gonna come back over before I paint it. One last go over, then tack cloth, and you can spray it, which will be exciting. All right, guys. So talk about perfect timing. The headlights came in today. I'm about to paint it. Today. So I just double checked the fitment. If we look at the gap across the top edge, because this wasn't messed up, looks like that. This one's about the same. So it means that for the most part, we can definitely work with this if it's not perfect. All right, guys, so we're, I guess we're ready. I mean, I guess when I painted the interior, there's a lot more build up to that. So like I was really ready. And I guess we're ready. Everything, I went through again, wiped it all down and got the last bit of grease and stuff out and I've wrapped up my cart here so we're ready to spray didn't want that to turn gray this I'm gonna have to like touch up the bottom with the spray can or just add a later date because I can't spray both sides so I'm gonna spray this side then I'm gonna take it away and uh, do the rest later and do the bay after that so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna mix up the paint let me say when you do this painting stuff you're gonna want to get a respirator. This is a $15 respirator from Harbor Freight and it's actually not that bad. So, I mean, it's worth it because this stuff will get in your nose, your nose will turn gray and be all stuck together. And also wear long sleeves because if it gets on your arm hair, it sticks and then when like you lean on something, your arm hair all sticks to you. It's a pain, but here we go. We're gonna mix this stuff up. Now, today, I'm not gonna lie, I did not read. Well, I did actually read something on how to mix this, so. We're gonna figure it out. All right, right guys, so we're gonna mix up the paint here. What I'm gonna do here is fill this to the 16 ounce, the one pint mark, which is four parts of paint. I'm gonna add four ounces of acetone, which is one part thinner, 
And then we're going to do two ounces of this catalyst hardener, which I have used before. It's pretty good. It should make it a lot easier um, to dry up. So. Twenty and twenty-four should be about two ounces right there. Right, so we just got done painting the car and I'm not gonna lie to you a couple things did get messed up I'm not a painter. I guess I got a little cocky because the interior came out so good But a couple things did not come out perfect. So overall we got a really glossy finish so far It's still wet. So of course we do now if you notice a couple of these seams Some of the paint appears to be pulling back from the edges on a couple of the seams like I don't know if you can see on camera see a little bit of a red It's kind of pulling back this over here got to run. I expect it. I really fucked that up. The gun was acting up, but it was still laying out, so I just went with it. I'm not a painter. I really don't know how to fix that shit. No joke. So over here, no problem on this apron. This side panel, some runs again, but it's okay. Strut towers are something I really wanted to look good because there's something that catches the light. This shit is sticky. I'm going to get off my foot. So the strut towers and this inner tub came out pretty good. If you look right here, we have some of that paint pulling back from the edge like I was saying. Frame rails look good. Back here where the battery went looks good. Now, you'll notice I wiped the entire firewall off basically. And that's because I started getting over here. Actually, I covered them up. You can't really tell. You can see there a couple little solvent pops as well as down there there's some. Right here, it looks like complete shit from all the solvent pops and the running. And I don't know why. Like, just that area. I mean, it's my fault. I must just not have cleaned it good enough. This also all popped, but I cleaned it up and it came back with slight pops, but not much. That's going to get covered up by the booster. So, honestly, that can be a little messed up. And a little bit in there, but not too bad. This one on the strut tower we have to fix. And otherwise... It did shoot out, like, these aren't really solvent pops. They're like pieces of dirt. I actually saw them come out of the gun a couple times. And then over here, we have the paint pulling back from this seam again. So we're going to let this dry, do what it does, and then we're going to come back and assess what I want to do up there. All right, guys. So pretty much just wiped that down and tried to respray it real quick, but it's still pretty runny and fucking terrible. So um, down there, too. So pretty much, this is the only spot that has a problem now. Everything else is actually looking pretty good. I said that little bit right there. There's a fucking rut in this tower. I mean, I'm not as happy with this as I was the interior. Mostly because this is going to be a lot more of what you see. But we're going to let it dry and see what kind of damage we have to do. Alright, so it's been about 24 hours. And the paint is super glossy. The enamel stuff, the catalyst hardware, actually works super good. I'm not going to lie black glossier than the roll cage, but it wasn't 100% dry. Not as bad as the roll cage was, but you can still leave fingerprints in it right now. So I just put this heater on it, slowly but surely baking the paint a little bit. And if we check, we got 100 degrees at the sheet metal. And of course, as it goes over, it gets less, but and that's pretty good for back there to be 80. So next we're gonna do this side. So here it is guys, the gloss add additive, the hardener stuff, definitely helped get it a lot glossier.
Um, it's still a tad soft. Like if we go right here, push our fingernail, you can see that little bit of an indent. But it's a lot better than it was when the interior. All this is taped off because I just did a sweet little bed liner job underneath. We'll talk about that later though in another video. Um, yeah, but overall, I'm, I'm happy with it. Obviously, this spot got messed up. This spot has a little bit of lint in it from when I wiped it off. And they said this is the only really spot that got jacked up. And yeah, I mean, it sucks, but it only is my fault. You know, I really, I like, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to painting. And I should have taken a little more time. The gun wasn't spraying right, so I should have taken a second and figured that out, but I just didn't. And um, the rest did come out okay with the gun spraying messed up. Just that one spot wasn't clean enough. So no one fault, no one fault about mine. And next time we know to go a little bit better with that. Here is the paint all dried up. I did some things I didn't show you guys. I started, I got the front brake lines done before the motor went in. You actually can't see them, they're tucked. See them there. Well, look at that, that's for another video, but here's the brake lines here, all tucked away from danger and whatnot. And I also bedlined these, the fender wells, and the entire undercarriage is bedlined. And today we're going to be putting the motor in to finish up this video. And I'm going to have to obviously throw my trans together now, so I'm going to put my clutch and my flywheel on and then throw the T10 on the, the bell hot, or on the uh, block. All right, guys, we got the trans on, also threw the starter on. I'm hoping I can leave the shift linkage and the shifter on. I think I'll be able to. I also got the AM clutch hose hooked up, and we're gonna try and guide her in there and see how it goes. I also taped up the rails, so hopefully they don't destroy the paint. And the car is also jacked up, mostly because that's just where the jack stands ended up, so they're engine hoist could fit, but it should also help because of the angle of the motor and trans, and the car will be a little bit closer, so. All right guys, so it's really tight down here, but it's all bolted up. Also, I had to take these two bolts out and shorten them, but that's for the shifter boot. If we look right here, such a close clearance right there, and even right there in clearance a little bit. You can also check out this beautiful bed liner. It's such a work of art right here. But let's drop the shifter down and get that bolted up, and we'll be done about it. All right, guys, so this is it. I mean, this is the final product. And if you, if you see, the motor actually is like pretty far back. Like yeah, the, you know, the, the K member is like there. So from here, pretty much this bolt back is all behind the front axle, which is pretty dope. Um, I could have went a little bit further back, but if you look over here, you're gonna run into issues with this and also the bell housing. And this way, with how this is right now, just look how easy it is to get to these trans bolts. So pulling the trans will be a thousand times easier and it'll be easier to get to pretty much everything on the motor, which is, you know, pretty much why I designed it like this in this position. Now I was going to order the SVT radiator fan and the Mishimoto rad. For now, I'm just going to order the rad because the more I look at it, the rad actually sits right behind here. I'm just not sure if there's going to be room for that thick. So I think it's a 3000 CFM fan. But that's it guys, if you come in here, we can see the shifter, which I did get powder coated, a very cool color, and you can't actually see it. That's the shifter, it looks fucking rad. But, um, you know, you got a pretty, you know, it's really tight still, but anyway, that's enough talking for this video, guys. Next video, we're gonna be working on some suspension stuff, and then it's gonna be diving in to plumbing up and wiring, we're going to be bouncing around a little bit, there's a lot of stuff to be done. Um, I already started getting the AN lines together, this is the AN fitting, I ordered the AN fitting for that one. I have more AN fittings over there to adapt more lines, just to the AN fitting in the tank for the return, this is a returnless system, but now it has a return. So that's it guys, stay tuned, there's going to be some really, really sick shit coming, I mean just look at that, the gray with the orange, the aluminum, oh, so gorgeous.
I'll see you guys. Oh, excuse me. See you guys next time, and I hope you guys are excited as me because this is so dope. See ya.